Hey guys, welcome to our NetBean tutorial. And in today's lesson, I'll be teaching you a bit of coding, and we will also be experimenting with a radio button. This is just to uh, help complete our NetBean series a bit quicker. This is mostly a uh, tutorial on how to get this thing up and running. So, this is our Celsius field, and this is our Fahrenheit field. Our program is going to determine which um, field is occupied. So let's say, for example, the Celsius field is occupied, then uh, our program will automatically detect that and then check if our Fahrenheit field is occupied. And if it isn't, then it'll automatically convert it. So uh, let's get started by double clicking on our convert button and getting into our source code. Okay, so now that we are in our source code, we're going to add an if statement. So if, and we're going to check our Celsius field. So if Celsius field, dot get text does not equal null and null basically means nothing so if it doesn't equal nothing which means if it has something in it that might be a little bit confusing but um, anyways so in Java this is not equal to it's an exclamation mark and then it equals to sign right after so if it does not equal to we're going to get the text out of this field now keep in mind that um, in Java, the text fields are only able to, to deal with text, strings, um, characters, things like that. We cannot do mathematical formulas. So we have to convert the value in this into a number. So let's firstly get the value. Now, um, this is just to make it easier. If you're a more advanced programmer, you don't actually, you can do this all in one step, but we're not going to do that. So let's add a string. And let's add degree. But this is a stupid variable name. I'm not very good with them. So Celsius Celsius field that get text. Oh sorry. That means auto full. It's basically getting the text from our Celsius field and putting it into this variable name called degree. Now our text is in this degree, so let's forget about Celsius field that get text. Now we're going to add a double. Now a double is basically a number with um, which has a decimal point. So we can use numbers that have 86.321843 um, with the integer we have just rounded it off to 86 degrees. So let's say double degree um, Celsius equals double dot pass double. Now this is just uh, part of the Java API, double dot pass double. And in these brackets we need to put our variable name, which is degree. Now as I said, if you're an advanced programmer, you don't actually have to put in this first line. You can just copy this and put it in place of that. Okay, but anyways, we have our degree Celsius. Now we're going to get a formula to convert Fahrenheit to degree. Already got that off the internet and um, this is what it is. Degree C. Okay, this is what it is. You can see I've added a number, another double, uh, Fahrenheit for Fahrenheit, and our formula is degree Celsius times nine over five, which is uh, I think that should be 1.8, 1.8 uh, plus 32. Now keep in mind to always put put things in brackets like uh, bod mass, which you might have learned in primary school. Um, basically, multiplication must happen first, then addition must happen afterwards. Okay. Now we can uh, we can either test this out, but uh, since this is a basic program, we are not going to use the output terminal. We're just going to go straight and put it into our text field because I want to make this video as short as possible. Um, so yeah, let's get the variable name, which is Fahrenheit field. Copy and paste because uh, programmers are lazy. So yeah, okay. So Fahrenheit field dot set text. Once again, another NetBeans uh, function, whatever you want to call it. And it's basically the same as get text, but instead of fetching text, we are now putting text into the text field. And um, we can put in Farron, which is our answer. And uh, as you can see right here, we have an error. Now, sorry about that. Now, in our, um, you may be wondering why do we have this error? Now, keep in mind, in our very first tutorial, I explained that text field can only handle text. 
and in this first line you can see we have to convert the text into a number now we have to convert the number back into a text so let's put this as Farron F for Farron final now let's type in Farron F is equal to Farron plus an empty string an empty string is sorry we didn't actually declare this as a string okay so an empty string is basically uh, two semicolons straight off one after the other. You can leave spaces if you want. It doesn't really matter as long as you don't have text in it like that. Um, then it's considered to be an empty string, which means there's nothing in the string. That's basically how you convert it, and we no more have the error. Let's compile and build. Now run our program. Now let's put in 30 degrees Celsius. Click on convert, and we got 86.0 degrees. Let's try something a bit more complicated. 30.2. Now you can see. Um, our answer is changing at the bottom as well. Now, just keep in mind this program has lots of variables that can change. Uh, let's say, for example, someone types in hello. Convert, and you can see we have a whole lot of red errors here. Right here. Now, we have to cater for that. We have to say, um, we have to add exceptions, things like that. Now, you guys can add that in your own time. As I said, this is not a uh, Java tutorial. But uh, you can add a try and catch. Um, maybe if it's not a number, um, different things like that. But you may also notice what happens if I type 52 degrees, 53 degrees here, and um, you can see it works fine right now. But what happens when we start adding stuff for Fahrenheit field? We need to add a more in-depth if statement. So we need to add an and, and in Java we use two ands, um, basically shift and seven. And we're going to type in Fahrenheit field dot get text equals sorry equals equals no uh, forgot the open close brackets okay so now basically we are checking if Fahrenheit field has nothing in it and we are also checking if our Celsius field has something in it now remember in Java we can use and and we can use or which is the sign right here um, and there's different different things like that it's basically like logic gates if you did uh, electronics but uh, this wouldn't actually work now this is because once again text fields can only handle text equals equals usually deals with numbers and mathematical formulas or equations so we have to change this to dot equals and uh, we can put it as null but you can see we have an uh, error here null is usually used with equals equals or not equals so we going to change this to an empty string and that should work now you might not get why we actually did this right now but uh, when you guys go home and do your homework and uh, yeah I'm giving you guys homework so when you guys go home and do it Oh, you're probably at home now watching this video but uh, when you decide to try it out you'll notice that someone can type in hello something in there try click convert get errors and uh, you'll need a whole lot of if statements to check certain things to make sure your application is bugless and uh, in vertex digital arts we always make programs that have no bugs in it our version 1.0 is the the first version and the only version that uh, it doesn't have any bugs. We don't have version 1.2 for bug fixes, you know. So we try to cater for everything the first time. Because as a consumer of products, you know, uh, software, we hate it when we get errors. But uh, yeah, so we type in 52, 14, you can see nothing is happening because we added this extra field. If we delete that, you can see we get an answer. Now, when we try to change our uh, temperature let's say 80 degrees Celsius it doesn't work because it's telling us that um, both fields have something in it so let's add something that will clear both the text fields just for convenience sake and to avoid this error now let's try using a radio button which isn't the best choice for something like this you would probably use a button but uh, just to continue on with the series we're going to be using a radio button so let's drag and drop this in and you'll see it disappears. So let's go to our navigator, 
take our radio button and put it over our image. Right click on this, go down to properties, scroll down and look for opaque and untick that. Now you can see it changed. Let's just change the uh, color to white so it stands out. There we go. You can edit the text so clear all values. There we go. Centralize it a bit more. Okay. Now we have this compile build run and there we go. Nothing actually happens, of course. Let's add some code. Right click on this, events, action, action performed. Scroll down a bit. Um, okay, so okay, so uh, let's get coding this. Now let's just rename our our value really quick. Change variable name. Clear all. Okay, now let's get back into our code, and we're going to add another if statement. If oh, I didn't actually copy paste it, but uh, if clear all that is selected once again a uh, function in NetBeans or Java um, it's pretty basic it's uh, basically checking if it is selected and um, if it is selected then we're going to run some code so as soon as it, it finds out it's selected we're going to change Fahrenheit field dot set text you put it as an empty string. Just a really quick and easy way of uh, removing text out of a text field. I know a whole bunch of other people who use uh, Java sit there and type out all these pages of code to do something that takes us one line. But, uh, okay, let's try it out. 23 degrees Celsius, convert that to 73.4. As soon as you click this button, our text should disappear. So, tick it, and our text is gone. Now, keep in mind that our button is still checked as on. So, we can still work with it, but if we click it again, it doesn't disappear. We have to click it twice. So, let's add something that will automatically change it back into the off state. So, for that, all we have to do is type in clear all dot set selected false this is basically like um, set text we're basically forcing what we want it to be set as we want it to be set as false so false means unticked or unchecked whatever you want to call it now you can see it disappears really really quickly to the point where you can actually not see the, the little blue button in the middle that's okay. Like I said before, this wasn't obviously the best option, but this is just to, to help you with your own projects. So 96.8, click it, disappeared, and uh, you can obviously do it like that. So yeah, this is how we would use a uh, J radio button to clear text fields or anything like that. Obviously, for a more practical solution, you might use a button or a different string control, but this is just for the purpose of uh, teaching you guys how to use different uh, functions within NetBeans and how to use all these swing controls. So, anyways, I hope you guys like the videos. Uh, please subscribe and comment, telling us what you would like to see in our future videos. If you have any uh, requests or any any things that you would like to be custom built, then please let us know, and we would gladly help you. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching, guys.